In this video, you will learn how to use TypeScript together with React. Our first step would be to generate React project together with TypeScript. You can use for this Create React app, but I highly recommend you to look on Vit tool. It allows you to generate different frameworks and it is extremely fast. As you can see here, to generate a project, I am using npm create Vit at latest, and here I typically need to provide the name of the folder or my project, but I want to generate it inside current folder. This is why I just put dot and hit enter. As you can see here, I am getting a message, current directory is not empty, do you need to remove all files? I am hitting yes, and here we are selecting the framework. And here we are interested in React, I am hitting React, and now we can select either TypeScript or TypeScript with SWC. And actually this is a new hot stuff, which makes building faster, but this is a topic for another video. I am hitting here enter, and as you can see my project is generated. Now we simply need to run npm install and npm run dev. As you can see we got a message that our server was started on this port. And this is how our project looks like. Now we can jump inside our project and check what we have inside. First of all here is main TS6, so everything is written with TypeScript, and here we can safely remove index.css, we don't need it, and here index.css and app.css, and we also don't need our assets. Now here I am jumping inside app TS6, and I want to remove all these imports, we don't need them, and also everything except of just a single div. And instead of the div, I just want to provide here h1, so we can see that our page is working. And for example, we can write inside Monster Lessons Academy. As you can see, our component is successfully rendered, and we can start using TypeScript inside our project. So what are we doing most often? We are creating child components, and we are providing some props inside these components. Let's say that we want to create a custom button component here on the top. So here I am creating our button, and we can provide inside some props. For example, it will be text, and by default we can set it to submit, and also we might provide an icon. Now here inside let's just return a button. And inside we always want to render text, but before we want to render an icon, if we have an icon. This is why here let's ask do we have an icon, if yes, then we want to render an icon inside a span. So here I have an icon. And now here inside our app we can render this button and provide inside text. And as you can see directly we have autocomplete from TypeScript. Here we have text and TypeScript knows that this is a string and we can provide it inside, for example foo. And here let's provide an icon. And icon is also visible for us, but it is any, because we don't have a type yet. And here inside I want to provide such icon. Now we must wrap everything with additional div. So here we rendered our component button, and as you can see from the TypeScript, we already got some stuff. TypeScript knows, okay, this is a component button with props, text and icon. Text is optional, because here we provided default value. And here we have also an icon which is any. This is already good, but we can do it better. First of all, as you can see here, our button returns G6 element. And actually I prefer to write here G6 element, so we we'll always return marker back. For example, you might write it wrong and you might just say here return foo as a string. And in this case here we directly have an error, type string is not assignable to type element. This is why here we are on the safe side that we are returning exactly G6 markup. And actually previously you might use for TypeScript inside React, React FC or React functional component. It is not recommended anymore, this is why here we are writing that we are providing back G6 element. Now let's talk about props. Here TypeScript already got quite a lot, and it knows what we have here, but for example icon is any, and this is not that good. This is why here on the top I want to create props, which is just an interface. So here we can create an interface button props. And here inside first of all we have text and we know that this is an optional string. We also have here icon and it is also an optional string. And now here after our object inside parameters we can provide button props. 
In this case here we are sure what we are getting and I can't write here that we are getting here foo because foo in this case does not exist on type button props which actually means we really won't always write an interface for props for every single component. Now let's talk about children. Really often you want to provide a component inside or at least a string. For example, let's say that inside our button we can provide some markup. As you can see in our case here, we're getting an error type children never array is not assignable to type buttons props because property children is not specified. What we want to provide here just for testing, for example, a div with some text inside. And now here on the top inside our button props, we can say that we can have children, but they are optional. And our children is actually a GS6 element that we used previously inside return of our button. And as you can see, this code is completely valid. And now we can provide this markup inside. But we didn't use that inside. We can now write children here to get them from the props. And after our text, we can check, okay, do we have children? If yes, then we want to render this markup. As you can see in browser, here is our markup that we provided inside. And now it is correctly typed. If we will try to provide inside, for example, some string, then it won't be valid because string is not a GS6 element. Now let's talk about React hooks. And actually most often you will provide some data type inside your use state. For example, here we have our app and we can create here a user. And actually this user would be of some user interface. This is why here we are defining user and set user. And here we can write use state. And inside we must provide an initial state, for example, now. And as you can see in this case here we have use state any, which actually means this is not a good TypeScript. What we can do here, we can provide an interface inside. For example, here we say that it can be either user or now, which actually means now our use state is typed correctly. But we are lacking our user. This is why here on the top let's create an interface for the user. For example, here we have an ID, it is a string, and maybe a name and it is also string. In this case here, now it is completely valid and we can provide in our use state only either user or null. This is why here I can write set user and provide inside something like object foo. It won't be valid and we will directly get an error. This is why we are on the safe side if we always type our use state. When talking about states, you must know how to work with classes. Yes, I know that classes is an older approach inside React, but it is still not deprecated and you might get a project with classes inside React. This is why you must know how to work with them inside TypeScript and this is not that difficult. Let's define our const app like a class. What I want to do here, I want to define app and we're extending here from React component. This is why here I am importing component from React and here I directly want to type it. And first argument here is our props. And if we don't have any props, we simply provide here an empty object. And there's a second parameter we are providing here state. It might be also an empty object, but here I want to define some state. This is why I'm creating here app state, but we don't have it yet. I want to define it here on the top. And it is just an interface app state. And we can define here, for example, that we need current user. It is optional and it will be our user. So now we successfully define the state. And what we can do is set it on component did mount. As you can see, we are getting nice autocomplete with all methods inside TypeScript. And here I can choose component did mount. And inside I can use this set state in order to provide a state. And here we can write current user insight, which is id string and name string. Now here we also must create a render method because we don't just return our markup, but we pack it in additional method. And as you can see, my autocomplete returned here react node, which is also possible, but I prefer to write everywhere g6 element. Now here inside we can return our markup, just like we did previously, and as you can see in browser, it is still working like before. So the only thing that you need to know that we are providing as a first parameter our props and as a second parameter our local state. And the last thing that I want to show you is how to work with React context and how nicely it is covered by TypeScript. 
So let's say that here on the top, we want to create our context for our application. And let's name it app context. And we're calling here a function create context from React. And we're providing here some default value. For example, let's say that we have our theme and by default it is light. Now on the bottom of our markup, we can use again our const tab because this is a recommended approach and they will comment out our class. And what we want to do here, we want instead of the div, for example, write app context. And here we're getting a nice autocomplete and we must use here provider. Additionally, I want to provide some value. For example, let's say that we are providing here theme may be dark. And here I will close our app context dot provider. And the last thing here that we want to do from our context is get this information. This is why here I want to write that we are getting app context and we are using use context hook for this and we are providing inside our app context. As you can see here, I didn't write any TypeScript, but when I highlight app context, you can directly see that we are getting insight from TypeScript theme, which actually means TypeScript understands correctly what property we are getting from the context, and we can't make a typo, we are getting just autocomplete for app context dot theme. And also, if you're interested to know how to protect your routes inside React and make them accessible only for logged in user, make sure to check this video also.